Okay, I will start. I hope that everybody will be there soon. So um, we had started to talk about fields and field extensions. And um, so we finished by talking about, so we had done the degree theorem um, and uh, introduced the degree of a field extension and proved the degree theorem. And then we finished by uh, studying simple algebraic extensions. Maybe I state the last theorem that we stated and started to prove. So theorem. Uh, so we are in the situation that k, large k, is a field. Uh, so let's say is a field and uh, small k in k is a subfield. So large k is a field extension of small k. And so we take an element A in k, which is algebraic <coughs> over the smaller field. And we want to look at the simple algebraic extension generated by it. So we assume the, this, the minimal polynomial of A polynomial FA. Um, and uh, then we have uh, the following statements. First, the simple extension generated by A can be written is isomorphic to the polynomial ring um, in X divided by the ideal generated by the minimal polynomial. And uh, second, uh, the degree of Ka over K is equal to the degree of the minimal polynomial. And uh, in fact, uh, if uh, say m is equal to this degree, then the elements 1, a, a squared, and so on, until a to the m minus 1 are a basis. K A, so a basis of K as a K A vector space. Uh, of K A as a K vector space. Okay, so we had basically done the proof of one. Maybe I can go through it very quickly again. So we have the evaluation homomorphism from the polynomial ring in X, which maps to. Ka, which sends any polynomial G to G of A. Obviously, this goes to the field generated by A because we just have polynomials in A in the image. So this is a ring homomorphism. And um, we, uh, our definition of the minimal polynomial was that the kernel is uh, the ideal generated by FA. So, <clears throat> um, so if we take uh, L to be the image, so let L equal to be the image. Um, then we know for one thing that so this kernel is an ideal in the principal ideal ring. Uh, Kx in principal ideal domain to x. So the kernel is a maximal ideal. So Fa is a maximal ideal in the principal ideal domain Kx. 
and thus we have that uh, the quotient kx modulo fa is a field and uh, by the homomorphism theorem the quotient is isomorphic to L. by the homomorphism theorem. Now, if you have a, a subjective ring homomorphism, then uh, the image is isomorphic to what the source divided by the kernel. Um, so, <coughs> in particular, L is a subfield of Ke, and we have to basically show, however, that it is equal to Ke, because our statement is that uh, uh, <coughs> this. So, the first point is that, um, uh, <coughs> so L contains K as the image is cons of the constant polynomials and uh, L also contains A because if we take the polynomial X it is mapped to A because A is equal to the evaluation at A of the polynomial X. So we have that L is a subfield of Ka, which contains A and K, but this means it is equal to Ka, because uh, Ka is the smallest uh, field uh, which contains K and Ka. So thus, L is equal. So this um, describes uh, this thing. Now, <coughs> the second statement is uh, that we want to show uh, to compute the degree. And so, so we have, uh, so, so two. In one, we have in particular shown that the evaluation map at A from Kx to Ka is surjective. Because after all, L was just the image. No? And L turns out to be Ka. So it's a surjective map. So therefore, we can write Ka just as you know, the image of the evaluation map. That means it's the set of all G of A, where G is a polynomial in Kx. So that's what it is. Now, we want to show, uh, but maybe we don't need all polynomials. We want to show that, uh, first show, that, uh, so if M is, uh, the degree of this minimal polynomial, that these elements here uh, span uh, Ka as a k vector space. So 1 A until A m minus 1 generate um, Ka as k vector space. Well, let's, uh, so let's take any element in uh, Ka. We can write it like this. So let G of G of A be an element in K of A. So any element in K of A looks like this. 
So we say some g in kx. So <clears throat> we want to show that we can find uh, another polynomial of lower degree, which uh, gives us the same element in ka. And obviously, we do this by division with rest. Or maybe I write it differently. Yeah? So just to make it logically clear that b be an element in k of a, then, but by what we have seen here, then there exists a polynomial g in kx such that uh, b is equal to g of a. So if the degree of uh, g is bigger or equal to m, the degree of the minimal polynomial, we can make division with rest. So write do we have by division with rest that g is equal to q times f a plus r with uh, q and r in uh, kx and uh, r is equal to 0 or the degree of r is smaller than m. Okay. And now <clears throat> point is obviously that r of a is equal to g of a. So then, you know, we have, uh, because uh, f a of a is equal to 0, we have that um, g of a is equal to Q times F A of A, which is equal to 0, plus R of A, so Q of A, which is equal to R of A. But uh, that means that we can write thus B uh, is equal to R of A. And so if you write R is uh, sum i equals 0 to m minus 1, because the degree is at most m, uh, e i uh, x to the i. We find that uh, b is equal to sum i equals 0, m minus 1, b i a to the i. That means it is in the linear span of a uh, of one until a. Okay, so this shows that uh, these elements generate k a as a k vector space. And now we also want to show that they are linear independent, so that they are bases. So assume. 1, a, a, m minus 1 are linear dependent. Linearly dependent. So then, it's kind of the obvious thing. Then there exist, say, elements, say, b1, b0 to b m, b m minus 1 in K such that, uh, you know, this linear combination is zero. So sum i equals zero to m minus one, b i a to the i is equal to zero. But obviously, this means we have a polynomial of this degree which vanishes at a. So thus, for uh, g, equal to sum i equals 0 to m minus 1 bi 
x to the i, we have uh, g of a is equal to 0. So we know that the, so that means that g lies in the kernel of this evaluation morphism of a, so it is a multiple of f a. So thus g is in the kernel of the evaluation at a, which is the idea generated by f a. So we have that g is equal to, um, so it means that g is in f a. But you know, the degree of g is at most m minus 1. The degree of f is m. So this is only possible if g is equal to 0. So that means um, that g is equal to 0. So these coefficients were all 0. g0 is equal to b1 is equal to m minus 1 is equal to 0. That means these elements were linearly independent. So we have not found a non-trivial linear combination, which is 0. So 1, a until a to the m minus 1 are linearly independent. So, <clears throat> okay, so we have seen it. Somehow, I think this proof is quite straightforward. You, maybe most of you would have found it not so exciting from a certain point because I only one only does the op tries the obvious things and they work. <coughs> so now in particular, we can, I mean, if you think of it, this gives you a completely explicit description of this uh, field Ka, you know, as this quotient Kx modulo the, uh, as Kx modulo the Fa. You can also maybe make it slightly more, ever so slightly more uh, explicit as follows. So if um, Ka over K is a simple algebraic extension, and um, say of degree m, and we have f is the minimum polynomial, or maybe I still write f a, of A, then we can explicitly say, describe this as follows, can describe Ka as follows. Um, so as a set or as a k-vector space, Ka is equal to the set of all kind of polynomials evaluated A sum i equals 0 to m minus 1, um, say bi a to the i, where the bi, ah, okay, bi are elements in k. So as I said, it's just, it's just this vector space of linear combinations of the ai's, and the addition and the multiplication are essentially the obvious ones as polynomials. So, so addition and multiplication are defined in the obvious way. So 
as if these were polynomials. No, you just uh, you know, S for polynomials. In A, so you remember the rules, you add them component-wise, you multiply by this product formula with the additional rule. So, so with uh, the extra relation, so if you write, uh, if you write Fa equal to sum i equals zero to m, uh, say ci x to the i, then we want, to, if we multiply two polynomials, we can get, to, we get a polynomial in A whose degree might be bigger than m, bigger equal to m, and so we have to see how to get lower, and we do this by applying this, uh, namely, um, with the exhalation that a to the m is equal, so this is a monic polynomial, no? So we have that c m is equal to 1, is equal to minus sum i equals 0 to m minus 1, c i uh, a to the m to the i. And this can be used, uh, and this is used. Uh, this is used to eliminate uh, all polynomials in A of degree bigger equal to M. So whenever we have a power of A which is bigger than M, we can replace the M by this until we get only terms of lower degree. So it's a very simple description of this uh, ring, of this field. So just uh, as an example, so instance, uh, you know, you can view the construction of the complex numbers as of, out of the real numbers as uh, uh, Joining i as a you know as a simple algebraic extension, so so you have that uh, c is equal to r i is a simple algebraic extension where i is the usual square root of minus one in the uh, complex numbers and uh, the minimal polynomial. of i is uh, x squared plus 1, no? which means, you know, after all, i squared is equal to minus 1. And so then if we just apply this rule, we find that c, so thus, according to what this remark, we have that c can be written as a set of all a plus b i, where a and b are real numbers, as it should be. And the addition is the obvious one. So a1 plus b1a i plus a2 plus b2 i is uh, just component wise. So it's a1 plus a2 plus b1 plus b2 times i. And the multiplication is given according to this rule. So if I take, uh, say, a1 plus b1i times a2 plus b2i, according to this, we first just multiply them out as polynomials in i. So this is uh, a1, a2 plus uh, a1, b2 plus a2 b1 times i plus uh, i squared times say b1 b2 times i squared. And then we reply this thing that the i squared is replaced by minus uh, what we have here. So i squared is replaced by minus 1. So this is equal to a1 a2 plus a1 
B2 plus A2 B1. So I'm going to get like this. So the I squared is minus 1, minus B1 B2 plus uh, this term here, A1 B2 plus A2 B1 times I. So the, the rule of uh, computing and the complex numbers that you know uh, can be viewed as a, you know, is a special case of, of this. Okay. Okay, so much for the moment about these simple extensions. So now we want to uh, characterize uh, finite field extensions. You remember that the finite field extension is one where the degree of the field extension is finite. And um, <clears throat> so the claim is that the field extension is finite if and only if it is algebraic and is obtained by uh, adjoining uh, by, you know, and is generated by finitely many elements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a, okay, so this is the following theorem. So we have a few. So say let L over K be a field extension. Then L over K is a finite field extension if and only if first it is algebraic and second um, there exist finitely many elements So A1 to whatever An in L, such that L is the field extension generated by these finitely many elements. So a priori, you know, it was uh, not clear that a finite extension has to be algebraic because to be algebraic, for extension to be algebraic, it means that every element of L is algebraic over K. If we take, for instance, the extension generated by just one element, it contains many other elements, and it could be that some of them aren't. But we now easily see that this is uh, not the case. I mean, the proof is not particularly difficult, but so we assume we have a finite field extension. We want to show it's algebraic, and it's generated by finitely many elements. So let M be the degree of the field extension, which is some finite number. So <clears throat> then if I take any element A, it's kind of the same trick we've used before, any element A in L, we find that the elements 1, A, until a to the m, so these are m plus 1 elements in L, they must be linear dependent over k in the k vector space. So are linearly dependent over k. So in the k vector space L, you know, we have one more in this dimension, so it follows uh, there exists uh, B1, B0 to Bm in K such that it's obviously the same thing as before, that sum i equals 0 to m, B i a to the i is equal to 0. And the B i are not, zero, uh, not all 0. So that means if I take the polynomial, which has these as coefficients, then this vanishes at A.
thus polynomial g equal to sum i equal 0 to m uh, p i x to the i which is a polynomial with coefficients in x and it's not the zero polynomial uh, satisfies g of a is equal to zero. So a is algebraic. A is algebraic over k. So we even find that we have a bound on the degree of any polynomial which vanishes. So, <clears throat> and on the other hand, we can also simply, uh, how do we find these finitely many elements? Let us just take any basis of uh, L as a k vector of space. So, if A1 until A, in this case, the degree is actually M, is a basis of L as a k vector space, then we can write any element in L as a linear combination of, uh, of these AIs. So in particular, the field generated by these elements is the whole field. Okay, so this is one direction, and now the other one. So we prove this. Um, <clears throat> so assume that L is algebraic, and we have this with this number n. It's generated by n elements. We make induction on n. So In fact, we don't even, well, okay. So the case, obviously, the case n equals 0 is trivial because uh, then we just have, then our field L is equal to k and uh, the degree is 1. Okay, we make the induction step. So we assume that our L can be written as k a1 to a n plus 1 for some elements a i in L. And we put L prime to be the field generated by the first n of them. Um, then obviously there's some degree. So, <clears throat> so these, uh, so we have that uh, L prime over K is some finite number M by induction. Uh, so is, uh, is finite. Which I can call M by induction. And uh, so we uh, have to see, by the degree theorem, we have to say, see only what L prime, what L over F prime, L prime is. So, you know, we know that uh, A n plus 1 is algebraic over k and thus over L prime because uh, we have we know that L is algebraic over k and so every element in L is algebraic over k particularly also this thing so if we take uh, so let uh, say g the minimal polynomial of uh, a n plus 1 over a prime. And uh, then 
we know that uh, the degree of L over K is equal by the degree theorem to the degree of L over L prime times the degree of L prime over K, which this one was M. And this degree is equal to the degree of the minimal polynomial. No, because uh, L is equal to L prime, so L, L prime, a joint, a n. No, that's, we just have a joint one more element. So this is also finite. So we see that um, uh, every finite algebraic, every finite field extension uh, is algebraic and is kind of obtained by joining finitely many uh, algebraic elements. Okay, and uh, vice versa. So, we have a few, have some more corollary. So if you have any field extension, we can look at the elements in the bigger field, which are algebraic over the smaller field. And then the claim is these themselves form a field, and they form an algebraic field extension of the smaller field. So let uh, k over k be a field extension. And uh, let L be the set of all elements, say A in K, such that A is algebraic over the smaller field K, over small K. Then L over K is an algebraic field extension. is a subfield of K. So we know obviously K is contained in L. And so to see that this is an algebraic, uh, I mean, obviously, because every element of K is algebraic over K. Now we want to see that L, we have to see that L is a subfield of K, then we are done. Because obviously every element, by definition, every element of L is algebraic over K, so the field extension will automatically be algebraic. So to show L is a subfield of large K. Well, that's actually quite Simple. Let us just take two elements in L. And these are two. Uh, we have to see that their sum, their product, uh, whatever their difference or their quotient are, is contained in L. I mean, unless one of them is zero. So maybe we can assume that they are not zero. So to show. Uh, that to say a plus b a minus a uh, a times b and uh, uh, b to the mi a to the minus one are all elements in L. Then it is a field. Huh? <coughs> well. The point is, we can look. So if we look at K A B, the field extension generated by A and B, this is a field extension generated by two algebraic elements. So this is a finite, according to the theorem, this is a finite 
extension. So it is algebraic. So thus algebraic. So therefore, KAB is contained in L because all elements in KAB are algebraic. And therefore, obviously, the sum and the product and so on are also in KAB. Okay. Okay, so that's quite simple. And as I said, that this is an algebraic extension is obvious. So as an example, I mean, this is kind of abstract, but we can, for instance, look at Q bar. This is supposed to be the set of all elements, all complex numbers, which are algebraic over Q. So we can look at the set. And this is an algebraic field extension of Q. So Q bar over Q is an algebraic field extension. But obviously, it's not a finite extension. No, you can take nth roots of numbers for any n, so the degree is infinite. So of infinite degree. Okay, that's simple. We can also see that if you take a composition of algebraic field extensions, it will also be algebraic. So if we have a smallest field, we make an algebraic field extension of it, and then we make an algebraic field extension of the bigger one, then the biggest field over the smallest field is also algebraic. And in fact, um, yeah. So it is independent of whether these field extensions are finite or not. So let, say, k over L and L over small k be algebraic field extensions. then the extension of the largest field over the smallest is also extension is also fine is also algebraic okay so let's see so i i don't make the assumption that these field extensions are finite no so i have to but I still want to use uh, the uh, fact that, uh, uh, you know, how you deal with that finite field extensions are, uh, how they are related to algebraic extensions. And finite extensions are always algebraic. So how do we do that? So proof. So let u be an any element of k. We have to show that k is, uh, that this element u is algebraic over small k. First, we know it's algebraic over L. So then there exists a polynomial, say, f in L of x, which is not the zero polynomial, such that f of u is equal to 0. So we can write f sum i equals 0 to n, whatever m or n is, a i uh, x to the i, where the a i are some elements of L. Now we want to, <clears throat> so we want to that the thing is algebraic over k. So let's 
So um, let's see whether I. Um, so we have that these a i are elements in L, and therefore the algebra over k. So we take m, make another field m, which is the smallest field k, uh, and we join the element, the coefficients a zero to a n. The AI are elements in L, so they are algebraic over K. And um, there are finitely many of them, in this case N plus 1. So this M over K is a finite extension. So the AI are algebraic over K. Uh, thus, M over K is a finite extension. And uh, we also have, if I take M of U over M, so if U is an algebraic element so it's algebraic over L, but it's also, you know, the, 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 it's also algebraic over M because the coefficients of the polynomial are all out of M. So this extension, MU over M, is also a, an algebraic extension. And as we have only adjoined one element, it's a finite algebraic extension. And so we find that the degree of m of u over k is again by the degree theorem the degree of m of u over m times the degree of m over k. And these numbers are both finite. So therefore, this is finite. So this extension here is a finite extension. So as it's a finite extension, we know it's an algebraic extension. Every element here is algebraic over k. In particular, u is algebraic over k. It's finite, thus algebraic. Therefore, u is algebraic over k. And so we indeed find that you know, u was an arbitrary element in k, so every element in k is algebraic over small k. Okay, so now <coughs> we will uh, talk about extensions of uh, field homomorphisms. So basically, Extensions of field homomorphisms. So we will uh, later do Galois theory which means to study field extension via their, their Galois group. And the Galois group is the group, so if uh, L over K is a field extension, the Galois group will, the, will be the group of K isomorphisms, K automorphisms of L. So somehow, therefore, it is reason, you know, as a, uh, something one needs to, therefore one somehow needs to study how field homomorphisms from a, uh, from a smaller field extend to a field extension. And so we want to do this here. So, <clears throat> so the, the thing which we want to basically show at this point is that we, uh, we want to show uh, 
that if, uh, so I have again, say, k over k field extension. We want to show that if, uh, say, we have two elements A and B in the larger field K, which have the same minimal polynomial, over the smaller key fields, field small k, um, then there is an automorphism, then there is a small k automorphism of large k, which sends a to b, and there's a unique one. Then there exists a unique k automorphism. Ah, not of k, of... Uh, from k a to k b, with which sends so phi maybe with a phi of a is equal to b. So if two polynomials, uh, if two elements have the same minimal polynomial, then there is an uh, isomorphism between the Field, so it's not automorphism, isomorphism. Then there is an isomorphism from the field, uh, 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 the field extension generated by this element to the field extension generated by that, which sends this element to that. And there's, exact, there's actually a unique one. There's only uh, one such thing. So we prove, however, and this will be important when we want to do this Galois theory. Uh, as I tried to hint, and we will, however, need a slightly more general result where the difference is that we, even here, we don't just start with one field K, but we have two different Ks. We have an isomorphism between them, and we want to extend it. So let me formulate it. So definition. So let, say, phi from k to k prime be a field isomorphism. Maybe I, uh, and let, say, L over k and L prime over k prime be field extensions. So uh, an isomorphism say large phi from L to L prime is called an extension of small phi if uh, its restriction so K is this given map. Okay. So in particular, if we restrict phi to the small K, it maps to K prime. Okay, so let's, um, now we want to study uh, for this simple algebraic extension, the existence and uniqueness of such things. So maybe I before need this trivial observation. So if I have a field isomorphism, so if phi from k to k prime is a field isomorphism, then this gives me also an isomorphism between polynomial rings in the obvious way. Then I could call this uh, phi star from uh, kx to k prime x, which sends uh, any polynomial sum 
i to the zero to n a i x to the i to the polynomial where we apply phi to the coefficients. So this is a ring I'm isomorphism. So this is uh, essentially completely obvious. You can see that it sends the sum to the sum, and it's easy to check it sends the product to the product. And obviously, as this is an isomorphism, if I take the inverse isomorphism here and apply it in this way, this gives us me the inverse maps between the polynomial rings. So now, we want to make the statement about the extension of polynomial rings. So let, again, P from K to K prime be a field isomorphism. And we have, again, our field extension, uh, L over K and L prime over K prime field extensions. And now, we take an element A in L, which is algebraic over K. And we take, uh, so with, we specify the minimum polynomial with minimum polynomial. F8. And now we uh, take an element A prime in L prime to be a zero of uh, the image of the minimal polynomial under this map. Um, Okay, so then there exists a unique extension of this field isomorphism. So maybe I will. So then there exists a unique extension. of, um, say, phi. So from Ka to K prime of A prime of our isomorphism phi with, um, so this means that the extension means that phi uh, restricted to k is equal to k prime. And uh, the thing which makes it unique is that phi of a is equal to a prime. So there exists a unique extension of this original map phi, uh, which sends a to a prime. As usual, if something exists and is unique, then you, the, the normal approach is always that you first prove the uniqueness. You just see that the conditions determine it uniquely. And uh, this will actually tell you what it is. And then you check for that thing that it satisfies what you want. So that occurs all the time. Yeah. OK, so if we start with uniqueness. So let uh, uh, phi from Ka to K prime of A prime be such an extension. So with um, phi of A is equal to A prime. 
now we have to see whether we can. And uh, <coughs> where am I? So note, we have seen that k of a can be written as the set of all g of a with uh, g is an element in kx. In the same way, k prime of a prime is equal to the set of all whatever g prime of a prime, well, maybe h of a prime, where h is an element in k prime of x. So every element in Ka, so it can be written as a polynomial evaluated on A and in the same way here. Well, and um, so <coughs> and um, the ring structure is, you know, com in particular involves that you uh, additional modification of polynomials. So we know if uh, uh, so if um, uh, say b is an element of uh, ka then you can write b equal to g of a for a some polynomial for g in kx so if you write g, for instance, equal to sum i equals 0 to n b i x to the i, then the b i elements in k. Well, then what is phi of our element b? The same as phi of g of a, that is phi of sum i equals 0 to n, b i, uh, a to the i. Now, this is a ring homomorphism. So it, uh, you know, so it, um, we know that phi is supposed to send a to a prime, and uh, the <coughs> You know, and on the bi, which are elements of k, it's supposed to be small phi. So this is equal to the sum i equals 0 to n. Uh, I first write again phi of bi, phi of a to the i. No? Because it's a ring homomorphism. And uh, phi of bi is equal to phi of, so this is equal to phi, small phi of bi, and phi of this is equal to a prime. So this thing is equal to this sum, which in other words is nothing else than g prime, or was it, phi prime of g of a prime. So <coughs> we find that we have, uh, you know, we have actually computed the element. So that it's uniquely determined because just from the definition we're able to compute it. So now we have to check that this is a ring, a, a field isomorphism. Maybe I should have checked it's well defined, but anyway, I don't. Existence. So, so we define uh, phi from k a to k prime of a prime by uh, phi of 
g of a, so any element in k of a equal to g of a, is equal to phi star of g of a prime. So by this formula. So <clears throat> yeah, so in principle, I should have checked that this is well defined. So it's easy. This is well defined. So if um, two polynomials, G and H, give me the same element in Ka, then the difference is a multiple of the minimal polynomial. And then you can easily see that the difference maps to 0. And so it gives me the same. So that we get the same element here. You can easily check that, same as before. Um, and, but on the other hand, it's clear from the definition that this is a homomorphism. I mean, once it's well defined, it's uh, obvious phi is a ring homomorphism. No, because the <coughs> multiplication is precisely given by, and it is clearly. And phi is also clearly subjective. Because uh, we know that this map phi star is an isomorphism from kx to k prime of x. So obviously, I get, if I apply this, if I have all polynomials applied to A, by applying phi star, I get all polynomials applied to A prime. So the map is subjective. And now we have a subjective morphism between two fields. Then it is an isomorphism. Thus, phi is an isomorphism. I mean, in the notes, I have something more complicated, but because, uh, you know, the kernel of a f field isomorphism is an ideal. So it must be either 0 or the whole of the field. But it cannot be 0 because this map is subjective. It cannot be the whole of the, the kernel cannot be the whole of the field. So the map cannot be the 0 map because it's subjective. So it is an injective map. No? So P is injective as a non-trivial homomorphism of fields. So we find that this is an isomorphism of fields. And uh, finally, it is clear uh, by definition, where do I have a thing? So for an element uh, B in K, we, you know, we have that B is a constant polynomial. So we apply this, uh, you know, if we apply uh, to a constant polynomial this map, it's just uh, the map phi. No, the constant polynomial is just, uh, if, the po if I have the constant polynomial is b, then it's b times a to the 0, and the map is by sending it to phi of b. We have um, phi of b is equal to phi star of the constant polynomial b, which is just phi of b. So that means that uh, phi restricted to k is the small phi. And uh, by definition, we also have that if we take phi of a, you know, remember, you know, how do I get a 
by as evaluating a polynomial in Kx at A? Well, we do this by taking the polynomial X. So this is phi of the polynomial X evaluated at A. No? So according to our definition, we are supposed to apply phi star to this. But you know, the co coefficient here is 1. So the, the phi star maps x to itself. So this is, uh, you know, the, the map here is obtained by evaluating it at a prime. So this is x evaluated at a prime, which is a prime. And so we have precisely the statement that uh, we have a unique extension of this map from k of a to k prime of a prime, which sends, which is the, uh, which is the map. Um, yeah, this is obviously misprint. Phi restricted to k is the original map phi, and phi of a is equal to a prime. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> the thing which we are mostly interested in is uh, the thing which I mentioned in the beginning, namely, if we send set k equal to k prime and let the map uh, and let the map phi that we have here to be the identity, then uh, we get in particular the following corollary. So let. Uh, so L over KH be a field extension. And we take two elements in L, which have the same minimal polynomial. So algebraic with the same minimal polynomial. So P algebraic with the same minimal polynomial. Then there exists a unique K isomorphism uh, phi from K of A to k of a prime, which sends a to a prime. Okay. So somehow you, if you have a field extension, if you have several zeros of the same polynomial, then you find that there is a, an uh, extension, there's a field isomorphism which sends one zero to another, and the unique one. Okay, so we'll later see that this is a an important tool for us, this result. Although it's not, uh, and you know, this is a special case where we have to prove nothing. Okay, so before going on, I wanted to just make, how much time? Make a few remarks about the algebraic closure of a field. We are not really going to use it in the future, but uh, it's just, uh, you know, for completeness so that you have seen what the algebraic closure is. I also will not prove things. I will just state, uh, state it and state the theorem about the existence of an algebraic closure. So 
so, so we want to introduce the algebraic closure of a field. So this will be so field k. So this will be a field extension L over k, an algebraic field extension. such that every polynomial with coefficients in the smaller field K has a zero in L. Okay, so all polynomial equations in one variable with coefficients in K can be solved in L but the uh, field extension is algebraic. For instance, it's certainly not true that C is the algebraic closure of uh, Q because it's not an algebraic extension. So let me write the definition once again completely precisely, although it's already written. So let L your field, we say L, uh, we say L is algebraically closed. Ah, actually, here I actually wanted, well, whatever. What I said is also correct, but it's, <laughs> it's maybe not what I will say later. It's maybe an, it would be an exercise for you to check that it's equivalent to what I will say now. So I take a field. We say that L is algebraically closed if um, every polynomial f with coefficients in L has a zero in L. If uh, but I wanted to actually say it differently if uh, the following equivalent statement holds. So the first one is that uh, every polynomial f which coefficients in L uh, has a zero in L. And the second statement is that uh, every polynomial f with coefficients in L can be written as a product of linear fact factors. So it splits into linear factors. So every f in Lx uh, splits over L into linear factors. By this, I mean the following. I can write, I mean, I mean what I obviously am supposed to mean, but maybe I should say it. So I mean that F can be written as, say, B times x minus a1 times, say, x minus a n. So there exist b and a1 to a n elements in our field L such that f, such that f looks like that. So it's a, f is a product of linear factors. I, have, I need the b because it might not be monic. Now, obviously, these two statements are equivalent. One and two are equivalent. Two implies one is completely trivial because uh, you can see the zeros 
you know, f has zeros a1 to an in this case, which are elements in L. And the other direction is not much is by trivial induction. So one, two. So um, so let uh, let a be a zero. So a and l be a zero of an element f in Lx. So then uh, we can write uh, f is equal to x minus a times g, where g is an element in Lx, and the degree of f of g is equal to the degree of f minus 1. And so then easily you can see that you can uh, deduce the statement of 2 by induction on the degree of f. So 2 follows by induction on the degree of f. I mean, that's uh, clear. So Okay, so we can, for instance, see that Q is not algebraically closed. No, for instance, uh, uh, x squared minus 3 has no 0 in Q. And uh, R is not algebraically closed because, uh, you know, the typical polynomial x squared plus 1 has no 0 in C, in R. Obviously, it has a 0 <coughs> in C. But um, I claim that this Q bar, which I have introduced before, is algebraically closed. This does not I mean completely directly follow from the definition, but you can easily check it. Because by definition, it consists, of, uh, it consists of all the elements which are algebraic over Q. So every polynomial with coefficient in Q has a zero. But uh, I claim it follows from that that also poly every polynomial with coefficients in Q bar has a zero in Q bar. That's okay. And then I want to introduce this algebraic closure, and I think with that I will stop. So, definition a field L over K is called. An algebraic closure, so a field extension uh, over K is called an algebraic closure of of K, right closure. If L is algebraically closed, and the field extension is algebraic, if L over K is algebraic, and uh, L is algebraically closed. And you might uh, check as an exercise that this is uh, equivalent to what I wrote here. Um, <coughs> so, one can prove that every field has an algebraic closure. It's a, a statement of very much of the same kind that every vector space has a basis. In fact, it's proven in the same way with the lemma of Zorn, so with the axiom of choice. It's a kind of standard application of the 
uh, axiom of choice. So I will just, um, and I will not carry it out because we don't really care so much. So theorem. So the first statement is every field K has an algebraic closure. And it's also, let's see, um, and it's also essentially unique. It's unique up to isomorphism. So second, if say K and L are two algebraic closures of K, then K and L are small k isomorphic. So there's an isomorphism between them uh, which uh, fixes k. In particular, the isomorphic and k and l are k isomorphic. So then I should write it out, then there exists, then there exists k isomorphism uh, phi from k to l. Okay. As I said, it's um, quite simple. And um, so one can check. It's kind of clear that, uh, uh, so as an example, and you could easily check that, that for instance, Q bar is an algebraic closure and up to isomorphism unique algebraic closure of Q. And uh, obviously, uh, it's also, and uh, remark, and uh, you know that uh, C is uh, algebraically closed. I mean, I don't know whether you have had it yet. This is proven in complex analysis. I don't know whether you have already covered it, but that's the way one proves it. And um, it therefore, C is the algebraic closure, or is, is an algebraic closure. unique up to isomorphism of the real numbers. OK, maybe as my time is uh, essentially up, I will stop here. So we see each other the day after tomorrow. Are there, what, are there questions, comments? OK. So thank you. Thank you.